also not to just be hearers of the word, but help us to be doers as well, Lord. If we are only hearers and not doers, then we deceive our own. with each passing day. We'll thank you for it. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. And so let's sing 292. 292 in our song books. Let him have his way with, is that right? Yes. Let him have his way with thee. 292. We'll sing this song seated as Brother Jared leads us in this great song. So now I want to welcome those on Facebook having a little technical difficulties and no sound was coming out. So welcome you to our services. I know that that was a great thing. Uh, the live stream, my dad really appreciated looking on and seeing all the comments. And I don't know how you are with, with that, Pastor D'Angelo, but my dad always got a kick out seeing who was there and, and who was checking in and who was disliking his videos. No, he, no one was disliking it, but uh, he really did enjoy checking in on that. And so thank you so much uh, for joining in and uh, tuning into tonight's service. We have, of course, with us Pastor D'Angelo. He's no stranger to this church. He shouldn't be. He's on your missions list. So hopefully you've been praying for him. If I go to you as a member and say, hey, how about Brother D'Angelo? And you say, who? That's a problem. That is a huge problem. You should know who your missionaries are because you should be praying for them. And, of course, Brother D'Angelo, another uh, missionary church planter and planting a church in Hazlitt, New Jersey. I mentioned this morning about Pastor Santos being a church planter. It is not easy being a church planter. I think that they can tell you. Uh, if Pastor D'Angelo is not shaking his head yes, it's okay. His wife is making up for him. She is shaking yes for him. So it's really not an easy task to do that, especially in the Northeast. Northeast is, it doesn't play in the Northeast. I mean, if you go, if you maybe church plant in Georgia, you might have everybody and their dog coming too. But over here, uh, I don't know if, 
Maybe they'll just send the dog and not send anyone else. Uh, but it is very difficult. So keep your church planners and your missionaries in prayer for, for their ministry. I also want to remind every th everyone that the offering plate is on the piano. Uh, I know it's easy to forget when you bring your tithes and offerings. You have that little envelope in your pocket, if you have a pocket, and you'll just end up going right home, and then be like, oh, no, I forgot to give it in. So uh, don't forget to give it in. We don't pass the plates around uh, anymore uh, due to COVID, so it is on the piano. For those who give online, uh, the address is continuing to be on your screen. So we thank you for your donations to the church, and that has meant a lot uh, to of this ministry. Also, soul winning continues to occur on Saturdays at 10:30 a.m. We meet here at the church, and so uh, come, come one, come all, uh, to be part of that ministry and to go out and give the gospel to to those who need it. And uh, we know that that that's the Lord's command, and even in COVID times, uh, the Lord uh, does bless the word getting out. Also, we do have a meeting tonight for uh, members. I will say this, I, I don't expect this to be long. If you have somewhere to go, you can, st you can step out whenever you need to, uh, but this should go quickly. Um, I don't want it to go slow. So if it's delayed, I'm gonna blame you because you're the one asking the questions. Uh, but this shouldn't be so much of a question answer thing. This should just be a up, down vote, move it, move it right along. So that should be tonight. We'll meet on, on the Oregon side immediately after uh, the church service tonight. Then I have one more announcement I just wanna make. And this is kind of a sensitive announcement. And I don't really know how to make it, but I'm just, just gonna say it. So. I've been talking with my mom uh, next door. As you know, uh, for this past several days, uh, she has been staying with my brother Bill at his house. Uh, she did stay with me on Friday. It's a Friday evening. She stayed with me the night. But she does, does still stay occasionally in the parsonage. And so I just want to make this announcement, not that anyone is is doing this, but please be mindful that that is a home. And so what that means is you should not knock and just open the door. Please be mindful that the pastor's wife is still living in there with her, with uh, the handicapped daughter, and uh, please be mindful of that. I know that uh, there were things in the house that you need to get as as people you're doing things, finances or whatever case may be, please be mindful of that. Um, we don't want you to a situation that you're just invading privacy. You would not want someone to just open your door in your house. Please be mindful of that, please, please. So that, that's just my announcement for that. Uh, I know I sent Brother Jared uh, there to do some testing for batteries and he said, the door was locked. And uh, th that's right. I mean, if I gave him the key and no one answered, it really probably wouldn't have been appropriate for him to just walk in without an answer. So please, please be mindful of that. I think that is all the announcements I have right now. And so let's sing another song. 145, 145. It is well with my soul. Let's stand one last time and sing this song out before Pastor D'Angelo comes and preaches for us this evening. 145, it is well with my soul.
seated. Thank you so much. And th um, instrument uh, uh, guys, thank you so much for what you do and playing for the services. I appreciate it. Musicians, thank you so much. Trying to look, look for that word. Couldn't, couldn't find it. And uh, some musicians, thank you for your ministry. Well, we have here with Pastor D'Angelo. Again, I'm not going to give him more of an introduction. You uh, now know who he is. And so uh, Pastor D'Angelo preached for us here uh, this evening. Thank you for coming here today. All right, turn in your Bibles this evening to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, back near the end of your New Testament, and go to chapter 4 in that book. So it's good to ha be back again uh, at First Baptist, and uh, let me just uh, say that if anybody has any needs or anything like that, and uh, you need to call or talk to somebody, um, I work a full-time job during the daytime. I'm supposed to be off at noon. I usually work the three. I already get paid to noon, but I work the three. Uh, but uh, anytime after noon, uh, I can answer my phone and take time if you uh, need help for anything. So uh, we'll try to be a help to you as much as much as possible. But be faithful. Remember, the mission of the church here at First Baptist in Perth Amboy is exactly the same. Nothing has changed. Amen? Nothing has changed. And, uh, you know, uh, over the past uh, 10 months or so, since March of last year, we're, we're coming up to a year with this mask-wearing COVID thing here. Coming up to a year. Year. And uh, right after it began, they kept saying, they kept saying, they keep saying, the new normal, the new normal. I hope nobody here thinks that that is a good thing. This should not be the new normal. But a lot of things have stopped over this past year, have they not? Sports was delayed, and uh, now we have found out how unimportant sports is. Amen. Amen? We have found out over the past 12 months, practically, how unimportant pro sports, college sports, and sports in general is how unimportant it is. We've also found out how unimportant it is for your kids not to go to school. We've also figured that out. All these, all these uh, people were, uh, the NEA and all these uh, t teachers unions and everything were dead set against homeschooling and now everybody's a homeschooler. Ain't that funny? I, I think that's hilarious myself. And, uh, uh, and, and People have been have it have a hard time having fun in, in 2020 for the past year or so. People have been having they're down. Uh, drug use is up, alcoholism is up, uh, physical abuse is up, suicide is up, everything is up. But it, I guess the government don't care as long as you don't die from COVID. Die from everything else, I, they don't care. But it, it, COVID is the thing. And uh, it's really been a shame of what's been going on. And people, uh, human beings are naturally people who need to congregate with one another. It is a natural human thing. To separate people is dangerous. And uh, we are, we're going to see the long-term effects of this thing. Uh, but anyway, my message tonight is how to have fun in 2021. Amen? We should be the happiest uh, people on the face of the earth. Should we not? Regardless of what these restrictions are, and regardless of what the government is telling you you can and can't do, it should not affect our, and I'll use it for a lack of a better term, our mental health. Because Christians should be thinking of things outside of this world rather than what goes on in the world. I mean, if, you are, if your happiness depends upon uh, how things happen on this planet, then your mind is in the wrong place. Your affections, as the Bible tells us, to set our affections on things above. But if your affections are, uh, are destroyed because of how things are on the earth, that means your affections are in the wrong place. Amen? Uh, even in 2021, uh, 2 plus 2 still equals 4. I don't know how it is with the new math, but 2 plus 2 equals 4. But So we want to show you or tell you in the Bible to, uh, tonight 
how we can have fun because of the sun. S-O-N, amen? We can still be joyful. We can still be uh, cheerful. We can still be upbeat regardless of what's going on. Amen? And as a matter of fact, being upbeat and smiling and enjoying yourself in this life makes everybody look at you like you got three heads. Man, you're all happy and everything. And, uh, what's, what is it with you? How in the world can you be happy? All these people are dying, and, and this is happening, and that's happening, and it's, oh, it's just terrible. And you just sit there and smile, and you say, because of Jesus, that's why I can. Amen? Well, let me give you a few short things here. Let's read uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. The Bible says there, seeing then that ye ha we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you for the word. We ask, Lord, that you help us tonight to get our minds off the world and put them on you for the next few minutes. If anything, for the next few minutes, put our minds on earth, not on earthly things, but on heavenly things, spiritual things, so that we can come to you in our time of need and do that which will be pleasing to you. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen and amen. Now, we can have true fun. Now, the world thinks it's having fun. But you and I as Christians can have true fun because we have no regrets afterwards. How many things that the world thinks that they're doing that they have fun with, but the next day they regret it? Amen? And you know what I'm talking about, you adults. You know, you can do a lot of things that the world says is fun, but the next day you regret it. You either put on five pounds because you went ate way too much, uh, or you wake up with a, head every, a headache because you drank uh, the wrong things, and you thought you were having a good time, but the next day, it all comes back, and the chickens come home the roost, so to speak, and you regret what you did the night before. Amen? Since I've been a Christian, I've never regretted any good time I've ever had. Ever. And I've had more fun being a Christian than I did being a lost person. Amen? And I can do it with full conscience and enjoy it and remember it. And I, I can even remember it. I did things when I was a kid and when I was in the army, the next day I couldn't remember what I did the last night. But people were told me, man, you were having a great time. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. So what good was it? We can have true fun, number one, because uh, we have peace with God that cannot be disturbed. We, can, we have peace with God that cannot be disturbed. I want to go to the book of Romans since uh, we're in Hebrews. Go to the book of Romans and go to chapter 5 in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Great chapter. And look what it says here in the verses 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Again, the world tells you to do things that the next day, most of the time, you're ashamed of what you did. Amen? But our hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And when we were, uh, for when we were yet without strength, 
in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Now that's a, that's a peace with God that cannot be disturbed. It's based upon the Lord Jesus Christ, of course. And if anybody listens to this broadcast or is listening now on, on the broadcast, if you don't have the peace of God, you're never going to find it out there in the world. It doesn't exist. Everything that the world touts as being peaceful and good and fun and uh, uh, good time rock and roll type stuff is fleeting. It doesn't last. It a matter of fact, it destroys people. It destroys people. That's what it does. Because you're disturbed in this thing. Look, we've been justified by the finished work of Christ. We have justice at Calvary. We have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Or at least we ought to. Some of you out there, maybe somebody online here, says they're a Christian, and yet they look like they've been weaned on pickle juice. They walk around with a frown on their face all the time, doom and gloom, and I'm just wondering why. If you have peace with God, then what are you worried about? What are you concerned about? I think I said it last week that if you're so afraid to live or die, you're afraid to live, then you're already dead. I can understand uh, why you're so frightened and, and, and sad and, and have anxiety attacks. Because you're looking at the world. All this stuff that's going on was told in Scripture. Why we get, the only reason why you're uh, shocked by it is because you don't know what the Word of God says. I'm never shocked by what the world does. Because the Bible tells me everything that the world is against and how it's going to do things. So, point number one, we have peace with God that cannot be disturbed. That's why we should be able to have fun. We should be able to enjoy life. We should have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Number two, not only do we have the peace with God, but we have the power that cannot be duplicated. Power that cannot be duplicated. Now, if you go to Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28 and verses 18 through 20, we have power that cannot be duplicated. The world can't give it to you. Money can't give it to you. Your job can't give it to you. Nobody can give you this kind of power. Amen? 18 through 20, you know what it says. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We have a power that cannot be duplicated. Why? Because we have the Son of God walking with us and abiding with us. If, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? You if you work at a factory of a thousand people and you're the only Christian there, guess what? You outnumber everybody else. Amen? Well, Brother DeAndre, you don't understand. I work, with the, I work with all these guys and these women and they're, they're ungodly. Their language is terrible. They hate God. They laugh at me. You've got God on your side. You outnumber all of them. You have no worries at all. All power is given unto Christ, and since he abides with us, all power is given unto us. Amen? Well, I thought it was good. It's, it is a supernatural over all other power. It is sufficient. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. You want to turn there? It's a great verse of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and, and, and verse number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 5. What's it say there? Now that we are sufficient, we are not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. That's what makes me sufficient. I don't need anything else besides God. Everything else is icing on the cake, but Jesus is the cake. Amen? 
And he gives us great blessings. He gives us great things. He gives us a home to live in and a job to work and, and food on our table. But even without any of that, Christ is still sufficient. He is sufficient. And when you have something that's completely sufficient, you don't need anything else. Oh, all right. Thank you. And it's suitable, of course, for every test, trial, and temptation. That's First Peter. I, I rarely ever preach a message without consulting the first pope. All right? Peter said that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's First Peter chapter 1, verse 7. Uh, amen. Uh, it's much better than gold that perishes. Christ is sufficient for us. We have a God. We have peace with God that cannot be disturbed. We have uh, a power that cannot be duplicated. Number three, we have provision that cannot be diminished. We have provision that cannot be diminished. Didn't we sing a song talking about that God is in control of everything, has all power in His hand? And didn't we just sing a song like that? just a few minutes ago? Or did we sing it this morning? We probably sang it this morning. I get mixed up. I'm old. Give me a break. All right? Give me a break here. Get the minutes. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Back to the book of Romans again. Romans chapter 8. And let's look at verse number 32. That would be gr good one to look at. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You see, I have a provisions that cannot be diminished, folks. We have sustenance without worry. What does is, what is, uh, Matthew 6.33 say? Matthew 6.33 Someone tell me. It's a great verse. All right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He just got done talking about the sparrow and, and, uh, uh, and, and the flowers, and God takes care of the birds and the flowers and the bees and everything else. Then he says, if you seek God first, God will provide for you just like he does the flowers and the birds and the bees. Amen? We have, we have a sustenance without worry. We have strength without waning. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy. All right? 2 Timothy chapter 1. And uh, we'll read verse number 7. We, I think we read this last week for the Bible says in chapter uh, one of Second Timothy, verse seven: For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You look around in this world today, folks, and you see nothing but fear and people without sound minds. We should not join in with that. There are enough people that are fearful and have unsound minds already we don't have to add to the list amen and Christians should never be in that position where we don't have a sound mind and we're living in constant fear amen perfect love does what cast us out all fear amen now if you're sitting on the edge of the on a ledge on the 80th floor of the Empire State Building, you better be fearful. If you're standing on that ledge, that would be justifiable fear. You're 80 stories above the street, and you're sitting on a little ledge about that wide, that would generate fear. If you're not fearful in that, then your name is Walenda or something else. That you could walk on a tight wire across Niagara Falls without fearing. But most of us are not like that. But we're fearing things that we should not be fearing. Amen? The Bible says, we shall not fear what man shall do unto me. 
What is the downside of any of you, if you're a believer in Christ, what is the downside of you dying? The first person you're going to see is Jesus. Amen? The first person you're going to see. One man, uh, a, a famous evangelist of the years past, uh, finished a meeting, was going out to his car, and the thief stuck a gun in his back and said, give me all your money or I'll kill you. The preacher was poor. He didn't have any money. But he, he, he said, you can't threaten me with heaven. Amen? You picked on the wrong person tonight. I'm a poor preacher. I don't have any money. <laughs> Amen? We don't have anything but fear. That's what uh, a president said in the past. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Strength without waning. We have security without weakness. That's in the book of uh, Romans. The book of Romans. Chapter 8. Back to the chapter 8. And you know these verses of scripture well. Listen to them though. Listen to these verses in this time of fear today, folks. Listen to them. May, may it have better meaning, more meaning to you over the past year. Amen. Uh, we're thinking that, you know, we could walk outside down the street all by ourselves and walk through a cloud of COVID virus and get COVID. We actually think that. You know Pigpen in the Charlie Brown cartoon? He's always walking around. He's got this cloud around him. He's, he's called Pigpen. I believe that most people think that we're all walking around with a, clo a cloud of COVID-19 hanging on us. So you see people riding a bike wearing a mask. You see people driving in a car by themselves wearing a mask. You see people walking down the street wearing a mask all by themselves. Do you realize, I told my wife this tonight, do you realize if, they, if you can catch COVID-19 walking down the street all by yourself with nobody around, then you better wear one in your house because you can get it in your house. Come on. But we have such irrational fear. And nobody has said any of this stuff. Amen. No, no, Dr. Fauci has not stepped out and said, going down the street on the, on the dusty trail that you're walking on, you could get COVID. Nobody's ever said that. But people are making irrational decisions based upon fear. And we should not be worried about it. we got security without weakness. Listen to this verses. Verse 35, Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I am persuaded that neither, here it is, death nor life, Life's not going to separate you from God, from the love of Christ, nor angels, evil or otherwise, nor principalities, no government, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'll give the interpreter a couple minutes to catch her breath. You're welcome. Listen, we got security without weakness. Salvation was given to us freely in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are you saved, through faith. It is not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not by works, lest any man should boast. We got salvation fully. In Hebrews chapter 9, verses 26 to 27, the Bible says this. For then must he have often uh, suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he, Christ, appeared to put, a, to put away by the sacrifice, sin by the sacrifice of himself, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Right? Then verse 28, so Christ was off, once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin, unto salvation. Our, my salvation is full and free. I have nothing to worry about. Amen? I know you go to work, they tell you you have to wear your mask. I have to do it all day long. I somewhat wear it. 
you know. I, it's mostly a, a chin mask to me throughout the day. And I know we're, we're supposed to do a lot of things that people are telling us to do, but we don't have to fear. Amen? We never, ha we never stopped having services. We never stopped. You can ask me why after the service. Number, man, I just admitted that on the, on, online, man. Government's gonna, the NSA is going to come get me. Well, come and get me, guys. Number, number seven. Uh, number six, we have a priest that cannot die. We just read that in the book of Hebrews. We have a high priest that went once. He was sacrificed once for sin. And what does he do now? He ever lives to make intercession for us. Like the, old, the priests of the Old Testament who made intercession for the sinner who brought their sacrifice to the altar, Christ is the intercessor for us each and every day. Amen? He's our mediator. He's our lawyer. The best lawyer you'll ever have. And there's no fee for him. Amen? You don't have to pay a retainer to have the Lord Jesus Christ as your lawyer and your go-between. He's our priest, and he cannot die. Well, there's a number of verses in the book of Hebrews, and we're running out of time. So later on, look up chapters 1, verse 8 through 12. Uh, our brother here is going to put them on the line anyway. And then he's going to put on there uh, chapter 7, verses 21 through 28. We have a priest that cannot die. We have an intercessor that always hears us. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. He never slumbers nor sleeps. And then, the, and then uh, the last point here, we have a place that cannot be denied. Let's go to John chapter 14. And you know what I'm really talking about. John chapter 14. Start there in verse number one. Jesus said to his disciples before he was crucified and went back to his father, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go... Ye you know, and the way ye you know, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We have a place that cannot be denied. Amen. We have a heavenly place with Christ Jesus. He, our, bride, our bridegroom has gone to prepare a place for his bride. And one day the father will say, son, your home is finished. Your house is finished. Go get your bride. And then the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. When he comes back in, in the uh, catching away of the saints, known as the rapture, we're going to go. And that is our home. That is our heavenly home. Amen. And may I throw in there that we're not coming back at the end of that tribulation period. We're not coming back to rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Read the book of Revelation. Those that were beheaded for the testimony of Christ and uh, underneath the altar, the Bible says that they came back and ruled and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, not us. Will we have access? Of course we will. We'll have glorified bodies. They'll have access to the New Jerusalem one day. Why? Because it has 12 gates. Four on, three on one side, three on every side. And the, on, on those gates is the name of the tribes of Israel. And the tribes of Israel will come in each and every day through the gate in which their family belongs. And they will come in and worship the Lord forever and ever in the New Jerusalem. Amen? What a great thing. What do I have to worry about? We have a holy place that is absent of Satan and sin. 
And sooner or later, the universe will be absent of Satan and sin as he's cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Why shouldn't a Christian have real fun in 2021? Really? Why shouldn't we be enjoying ourselves? I haven't watched a football game in several years. Ever since somebody started kneeling, I stopped watching it. Amen? But I haven't missed it. Uh, and uh, the way the Yankees have been played over the last couple of years, it's not worth watching them either. Oh, sorry, if there's any Yankee fans here, Mets, whoever they are. In fact, we should be the most joyful, happiest people on the planet every day, every month, every year, all the time. Why? We have all these things. No reason for us to be disturbed. Amen? We have a peace with God, so we shouldn't be disturbed at what goes on on the world. Jesus, did you realize that God didn't wake up and say, oh, I didn't know all this was going to happen. None, none of this took God by surprise. Amen? Nothing takes God by surprise. As one man said, did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God? Because he knows the beginning from the end. That's why he's telling us that we have, when we have peace with God that cannot be disturbed, we have power that cannot be duplicated, we have provisions that cannot be diminished, we have a high priest that cannot die, and we have a place that cannot be denied. Amen? Take these things. Over this past year, I don't know whether it's given us more opportunities to witness or not. I, I don't know. I think the opportunities to witness have always been there. There's lost people out there. There's saved people in here. There's saved people that go out there, and they all at least stay six feet apart from one another, but you can still witness the people. Amen? They're trying to muzzle you, but you can talk through your mask. Amen? There's, nothing has changed except us who ought to know better. The Christian ought to know better and ought to react better to the things that are happening. We're headed for a one world government, a one world economic system, and we're headed for a one world religion. Why? Because the Bible tells me that in the book of Revelation. We're heading there. We, we made a gigantic jump towards that this year. We made a gigantic jump towards that. It's amazing. I can understand people that are in socialistic and communistic countries bowing down and doing whatever the government tells them to do. I can't understand for the life of me Americans doing it. I can't understand for the life of me people risking their lives to come into this country to have a better life only to capitulate to their government like they were back in their own country. And they come here and they're doing it also. I'm, we're rehabbing my building where I work, and a lot of the contractors are Eastern European. And the cabinet guys are Eastern European. And one of the cabinet guys said to me, he said, I don't know, I came, spent all that time and all that money to get to the United States so I could be free. He said, now I gotta go back to my own country to gain freedom. And he should know. But we shouldn't be fearful. Amen? I've used this, opportunity, this thing as an opportunity to witness to people. Amen? People say, what do you think is going on? A one world government. They're bringing us down and they're going to... Our illustrious governor said in itself in a commercial, he said... All this eco economics, this COVID thing has revealed how unjust and unfair our economy system is, and we need a, we're going to make it new and better. Well, in order to make it new and better, you've got to tear down the old one. Amen? And that's what's happening. Unfortunately, we're just sitting there letting it do it. But I'm not worried about it. It's going to happen. Amen? But you and I, if you're here, you're a believer, you should not join in with the fear. 
Amen? Use it to witness the people why this is happening. It's not taking God by surprise. How many people do you know are blaming God for this thing? I know my atheist friend that argues with me all the time. He asks me all the time. Well, if your God is so powerful, why did he let this happen? He, un he misunderstands God. He doesn't understand who God is. I don't think God did it. I think God let it happen in order to try to bring us back to himself. Amen? But if we're sitting around worried and scared and frightened, we will not see it. We'll just bury our heads in the sand and hope it all passes over one of these days. Well, I can still have fun in 2021 because of all these things. And they're never going to change. Amen? With heads bowed and eyes closed for just a few moments, we'll have a hymn of invitation. play a hymn of invitation as we quietly stand to our feet. Father, you know the word. We preach the word. And Lord, there's many things seemingly more today to be fearful about than ever before. But Lord, as Solomon once said, there's nothing new under the sun. The devil has always tried to manipulate people with fear. So Lord, we should not be fearful. We should be of a love and of a sound mind. We should have, be able to enjoy our lives. We should be able to enjoy our kids and, our, and uh, our neighbors and our grandchildren and enjoy life and be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. When everybody else is down in the dumps, we ought to be upbeat and positive now, Father, bless the invitation time. If there's someone here who does not know you from the free pardon of sin, Lord, touch that heart today as we have our invitation time. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen.